Hello everyone, happy Monday and happy Labor Day. Super excited to be hanging out with you guys all here today on our days off, which I'm not having, but that's okay. <laughs> I'm Beth McCullough from Flamingo Toes and I'm really happy to be here with everyone today as we are sewing up the spooky laying quilt behind me. It's my uh, one of the patterns I designed for Haunted Adventure and it's a very fun quilt to make. I have been having a blast sewing these blocks up with you guys. I've loved seeing your progress that you're sharing in my Facebook group or over on Instagram. I would love to see more of your blocks. I know some of you guys have commented that you're sewing, but you haven't shared your photos, so be brave. <laughs> Let us see your photos. We would love to see your cute blocks. Oh, I hope everybody's having a nice day. I hope if you are um, having a day off that you are enjoying it. It is hot here in Tennessee. I'm hoping it's the last like hang on of summer because I'm just saying, okay, it's fall. Like <laughs> it's September, I can celebrate fall now, right? Like I might even like edge in some Halloween. I don't know. I got all my uh, fall and Halloween mugs down from the cabinet today. I started looking at decorating. Like I haven't changed out my quilts and my decor yet, but it's there, I'm thinking about it. <laughs> I'm going to do it this weekend, I think, if uh, it's not too busy, but I've just declared it. I don't care if it's not the 21st of September, I'm just going to go ahead and call it fall. <laughs> and maybe it'll cool off then. Oh my gosh. Well, let's see who's here with us today. Teresa is here. I'm so glad she said she's getting caught up with her blocks. Yay, Teresa. Uh, Vicky's here. Deneen. Connie's here. And Linda, Carrie's here. Hey, Carrie, missed you. Nice to see you here. Wendy and Vicki, Sari's here. Uh, Karen, Dawn's here. Hey, Dawn. Um, Angie says, it's her first live. It was 100 degrees yesterday in Midwest Wisconsin, so I spent her, she spent her day in the basement sewing. My goodness, Angie, that feels very hot for Wisconsin. I've never been there, but does it normally get to 100 there? That feels inordinately hot. <laughs> Hey, Rebecca's here. Rebecca, I owe you an email. I uh, was working this morning and I will answer you after our video. <laughs> Melissa's here. Hey, Melissa, happy Labor Day to you too. Shelly's here from Marysville. Yay, Sherry. <laughs> Rebecca's ready for fall. All right, if we all collectively get together and determine that it is fall, then it doesn't matter what's going on. We can just, just live in ignorance and decorate our houses any way we want to and drink pumpkin spice lattes and um, eat all the pumpkin things. I am a huge fan of pumpkin. I know that there are people, it's very polarizing. Everybody loves pumpkin. And then there's this whole subset of people who hate pumpkin and they don't like all the pumpkin things that associate with fall. So tell me, are you pro pumpkin or anti pumpkin? I need to know how you weigh in on this great, um, debate of fall. <laughs> I am pro pumpkin. In fact, I was looking up today going to try and find a sugar-free recipe for pumpkin cinnamon rolls. Has anybody seen one of those? I feel like there's one out there somewhere. So I'm going to look it up. <laughs> Ginger's here. Hey, Ginger. Anita's here. Oh, Anita, I hope you're doing okay. Traveling back to Florida after much needed uh, time home in West Virginia away from the hurricane. They lost a freezer and all the goods from floodwaters. Oh, Anita, I'm sorry. I'm sorry, I hope that was the only loss. <laughs> Anita says she loves the little pumpkins and cute spider blocks. Yay, Anita! So that's what we're sewing today. I'll move out of the way here a little bit. So we are sewing up, I called it row four on Instagram this morning and fortunately someone caught that. This is row five. I can count my own rows in my own quilt. <laughs> so we are on the cute spiders and pumpkin rows. So there's two little spiders and three little pumpkins. And I'm going to sew through those with you in a little bit, but I want to go over a couple things first. And of course we have to do our giveaway things. So let's talk about all the fun things. So I have had these fun pillows in the videos since we started the sew along. You guys have really liked them. And last week I um, get, did the, pa we had, <laughs> <laughs> we announced the patterns and released the patterns and also a video tutorial on Riley Blake Designs YouTube channel. So I've linked in today's post to the um, post on my blog all about the pillows, all about the patterns and where to get that you can watch the video in the 
um, in the post or you can click through and watch it straight on YouTube. It's totally up to you. But they're really fun and so easy to sew, you guys. They're just darling. So the sun is very bright today because it's fall. <laughs> um, so these are really cute, you guys. They're a set of pillows. I like ginormous pillows. You guys know that. These are 24-inch pillows. And so they're really big, super squishy. I put those like down alternative um, pillow forms in them. And so I just buy one set. I have two pillow forms and then I change them out for each season or however I feel like. So I have the, I've done a Christmas version. So those are free patterns. All these are free patterns. And then I also have a, um, uh, heart. It's a Valentine's version. It came out a little bit after Valentine's Day this year, but that's okay. And then these are also the same size as the pillows that match my um, Sweet Acres quilt. They're the Homestead pillows are also 24 inch pillows. So they're really fun, big squishy pillows. And I do them all with envelope backs so that you can change them out really easily. And I like to add pom-pom trim. I think it just makes it really fun. So, and I did add a little bit of you can't see it. Let me turn this around so you can see it on the other camera. Here it is. Oh, there you can see the colors a little bit better. And it looks enormous. <laughs> so I did add a little bit of sashiko stitching with my sashiko machine. You could use that machine if you happen to have one or you're interested in one. I love them. I love that machine. But you could also definitely do this by hand using floss or thread. This is um, the Sashiko machine basically does two strands of thread with each stitch. Um, so you could do that. You could use thread or you could use two or three strands of floss if you wanted to. So on this one, I did stitching inside the leaf that's in the pumpkin. And then I also stitched all the way around the pumpkin. And then I'll get the other one. And then for this one, I stitched around each leaf. And uh, this is my Haunted Adventure fabric, same fabric that I'm using to sew up the Spooky Lane quilt. And so I did the leaves this fun green color, and so I wanted to pull out the greens in the prints, and also to kind of tie in with the greens that's on the border, which is the cute um, camper print. It's really fun, these little cute campers. Um, and so I used the green to stitch around, but you could definitely, if you want your pillows to be more like just yellows and oranges, or even if you wanted to go like Halloween-y and add in some blacks, um, you could choose whatever thread you would like to coordinate with. So it's a really fun, it's a really fun uh, pattern to sew up. They're both free patterns. And I have the link in today's video description for you guys so that you can go check out that link and download those patterns and get sewing so that you can feel like you have fall in your house too. <laughs> oh, yay. I'm so glad. Okay. Melissa says she's pro pumpkin. Rebecca is pro pumpkin. Um, Vicki is pro pumpkin, but kind of no drinks, cookies, no drinks, but cookies, pies, and bread. Yes. So baked good, but no drinks. <laughs> That's what I'm reading from that. Connie's Pro Pumpkin. Okay, I like you guys. You are my people. I knew this already. <laughs> Rebecca is asking what size pom-pom trim I use. Rebecca, that is a great question. One sec, let me look. <laughs> so I buy pom-pom trim from, um, this is the Simplicity brand. It's Rights or Simplicity, same thing. Um, and this is one inch pom-pom trim. So I like to buy the big rolls from, um, you can get them through Amazon. Um, and they have really great colors. This is kind of their blue color that I just ordered because I was out. So it's one inch pom-pom trim and it just makes, um, it's really a durable pom-pom trim. Sometimes on Amazon you can find smaller trim or trim where the ball fringe is kind of frays or things like that. The Simplicity slash Rights brand has hold, held up really well for me as far as durability, washability, um, and just overall like use over time. So that is the brand that I try and stick to most of the time for my pillows and for if I'm edging, you know, an embroidery hoop or something like that. So <laughs> Carrie says, yes, Pip, pumpkin, baked goods, no drinks. Hey, Roxana, welcome. 
Okay, Deborah says Hobby Lobby has sugared jelly pumpkins right now. What on earth is that, Deborah? Is that candy? Like you eat them or is it decor? <laughs> it sounds delightful if they're edible. <laughs> okay, let's do giveaways, you guys. You guys know that I do giveaways every week. I'm about to drop this here. You guys know that I do giveaways every week. It's my way of saying thank you guys for tuning in. I do love our community. Whether we agree on pumpkin things or not, you guys are just the absolute best. So these giveaways are my way of saying thanks for tuning in and for just being generally awesome like you are. And they're really easy to enter. All you have to do is leave a comment on the video, whether you're watching live or later in the week, and I draw a winner at random before the next video. So. Um, you have a whole week to enter even if you're not watching live. So just a fun like little fun thing that we do here. So last week the prize was a really fun one. Um, as I mentioned last week, Back Quarter Shop does these boxes. They also have the So Sampler box which is a monthly subscription but they do a uh, seasonal boxes. So they do the spooky box, they do a Christmas box, I think it's called the Jolly box. <laughs> I can't remember what all the boxes are called, but they do really great season ones, a patriotic one, a Valentine's one. So this is last year's spooky box. This was last week's giveaway prize. And I just wanna show you real quickly what the prize was. It is a bad to the bone fabric roll. So this is, um, they do this occasionally for the the so sampler boxes or the um, seasonal boxes, but it's basically half of a layer cake. And it's not, they're all 10 inch pieces, but instead of 42 pieces, they're 21 pieces. So they're really, really great. And you can make such a cute quilt. This is Bad to the Bone by My Mind's Eye. And then there's some fun spooky things in here as well. There's always notions in the box. This is Thread Potion. It's a thread conditioner. Some little sew tights, which is a magnet. And then there is thread and some little clips for you to use when you're binding. And of course, there's always a pattern. And this is the pattern for this box. It's called Scary Faces. Now you can't get this box anymore because it's from last year, but you can check and see like sometimes the so sampler boxes don't sell if you don't wanna commit to doing one every month. You can check the website and usually there are some extras. So you can wait and see if you like the box before purchasing, but you can also sign up for their email list and um, then you'll be notified as soon as the next spooky box comes out. So you'll wanna definitely pick up this year's spooky box for sure. And our winner from last week is Tessa House. Hey Tessa, congratulations. So if you want to email me, bev at flamingotoes.com and you will be um, I will send you out this prize this week. So yay for that. <laughs> yes, Anita, you need to look for this year's spooky box. Oh, I'm going to sneeze. Okay, Karen says they don't have Tim Hortons in Massachusetts anymore, but they have great pumpkin donuts. That sounds lovely. <laughs> okay, I really had a great time. I put, went up to the... Um, the cabinets upstairs and I pulled out all kinds of fun things for you guys this week. So this is this week's prize. You're gonna love it, I'm excited. So I have three five inch stackers of Haunted Adventure for you, two of which are upside down. So it doesn't look as cool when I fan it, I gotta fix that. <laughs> so these are the Haunted Adventure five inch stackers. There are 42 little five inch pieces in here, all with the darling little prints from Haunted Adventure, which we love, right? <laughs> and to go with that, I have my Sunshine and Daisies quilt pattern. So I designed this quilt pattern to go when um, my basic Dainty Daisy came out. Um, and so I thought it would be a really fun solids quilt, but it's so cute, you guys, as a Prince quilt. I have a version of this made up in Sweet Acres that I'm gonna show you guys soon. And um, I thought it would be a darling little Halloween quilt as well. Even though they're flowers, it would be like little mums, right? And you could do some really cute things with that. So this quilt takes three five inch stackers and then you'll need to pick up fabric for your background and your um, border. So really easy, super cute there. And then if you are, hopefully some of you are stitchers, I was going to kind of pair that with, since we have cute cats, 
and Haunted Adventure. Um, I thought we could pair that with my little cute haunted cat stitchery. So this is called Come Sit for a Spell. And I'll hold it up here so you can see it a little bit better. And it's a cute black cat with pumpkins. And she's got a little spider web over her head. And her ears are white, but they almost look like little, little witchy ears. <laughs> not devil ears, because, you know, we're not saying that. But they're really cute. <laughs> so this is called Come Sit for a Spell. And it includes the chart to make this really cute design. And it's an 8x10 um, sized thing, if you do it on 14 count Ada. And then, because you need a needle minder to stitch with, you get the Coordinating Black Cat Needle Minder. And these are in my shop if you don't want to wait for the giveaway to see if you won. So that is this week's prize, and I think it's a really fun one. I hope you guys do too. If you want to be entered, all you have to do is leave a comment and that will enter you into the giveaway. So hopefully you guys are excited about that. Quilting and stitching is always good in my book. <laughs> um, and then also to let you guys know, there is a sale in my shop to, sorry, I was getting the iron ready. There is a sale in my shop that is today and tomorrow. It ends tomorrow night at midnight, my time, which is central time. And the whole entire shop is on sale to get us ready for fall. It's my happy fall, happy Labor Day sale for 20% off. You don't need to put a code in at checkout. All you have to do is check out and it does it all automatically for you. And it's the entire shop. So all the fabric that's in there, there's some Haunted Adventure, there's Sweet Acres, there's um, some Daisy Fields. There's even a tiny few pieces of Christmas Adventure left. So if you're looking for Christmas campers, you'll definitely want to pick that up at a sale price. Um, and then there's some Hush Hush 2 in there. So lots of fabric choices for you guys. But that also includes patterns, cross stitch patterns, and quilt patterns, and embroidery patterns. And it includes um, all the needle minders and notions, of course. So I have my shop linked in today's video description. You can check out um, all that's in there after the video and do some shopping. Get yourself all set for holiday projects. And you could even get a jump on Christmas shopping. I know, I said it. It's not a bad idea. <laughs> Ask me if I've started. No. But I'm perfectly willing to encourage other people to be like on it as far as getting their Christmas shopping started. <laughs> okay. All right. Are you guys ready to sew? Let's see. Who I want to miss. Um, oh, everybody's excited. <laughs> Anita likes the cat. She says she has the cat needle minders and loves her. Oh, yay. Aw, Anita, Annette, thank you. Oh, you guys are excited. I love it. Carrie says it's a sweet prize. Oh, you would love the uh, cross-stitch pattern in an embroidery version. Okay, Carrie, that's a great idea. I will look at that. I love it. All right. <laughs> hey, Pamela. Oh, you guys are the best. Okay, so are you guys ready to sew? Let's sew. So what we're sewing up this week is we are going to make two of these little spider blocks. They're very cute. There is a little bit of directional fabric in this one and I'll be talking about directional fabrics as we go, but these are very easy as far as cutting out your directional fabrics. You don't even have to worry about it. The spider legs, if you use the skeleton flamingo fabric, are non-directional. And the spider web fabric is directional, but this is a square. So just cut out your square and then pay attention to what side is up when you go to sew your spider web together, so your spider together. So very easy as far as directional fabrics. Um, so we're gonna make two of these cute little guys for this row. And then we're gonna make three pumpkins. And we're going to do two short, fat pumpkins, <laughs> short, wide pumpkins, because you know, and then we are going to make one tall, narrow pumpkin. So, and these will go, it'll go like short, tall, short, as far as how that looks on the quilt, which you can see right there. And when we get to the pumpkin section, I'm gonna have some tips for you guys on doing these pinwheels directionally, if you would like to. And I'm gonna give you an option if you would like to not piece the pumpkin. Or 
and I have another option. We have many options today um, as far as um, another option for um, doing some fussy cutting. So if you want to keep this square in the center and put just a cute like camper image or anything you really like, any cute little Halloween print, you can put that in there too. So we'll talk about the pumpkins in a minute, but let's do our spiders first. Now these are cute spiders and I know some people are extremely anti-spider and um, but these are cute spiders, <laughs> right? I do not have the math for you on how to do um, if you wanted to leave the spiders out, but you could conceivably make two more pumpkins and then just redo the math on the sashing. So if you wanted to make three, <coughs> excuse me, <coughs> three uh, short pumpkins and two tall pumpkins and then do different sashing, it would totally work if you want to leave the spiders out. I know that there are people who feel like, you know, like some people feel about snakes, that's how they feel about spiders. So they're not having it, <laughs> which is fine. I totally get that. But for those of you that are spider friendly, let's sew up some spiders, okay? So what you need is you need your, your A piece and then you need K background pieces. And you're gonna have four of these and we're gonna sew one of them on each corner to give our spider a rounded body. And you're going to draw diagonal lines on these. I'm not gonna draw them on because I'm gonna use the laser on my machine but your lines are going to go like this. You're going to have each line, you're gonna make sure you do it on the wrong side of your fabric, not the right side, and you're gonna go like this to have this rounded effect for your cute spider body, okay? So what we're going to do is we're gonna take this over to the machine. We can do all four of these in one sitting because none of them overlap. It's only when you have pieces that are overlapped that you have to do one at a time. So if you are doing two spiders, which you will be if you follow the pattern instructions, you can definitely take them both over to the machine at the same time and chain piece them together. So let's, um, oh, Kimberly's here. Hey, Kimberly, I'm so glad you're here. And Jane says they are cute spiders, yay. <laughs> Sherry, I'm so glad you're able to sew along. Okay, you guys are awesome. Let's go sew. <laughs> Sorry, I bumped the camera there. Okay, so we're going to sew um, these on and we're going to follow the diagonal lines that the pattern shows you to create that rounded effect. So let's just make sure that your pieces on top are straight and lined up with the print piece below. So we're gonna sew diagonally, and you can see I've got that laser there that makes it really easy, and I don't have to draw my lines. You can also use that washi tape that has the lines on it if you would like to. That also saves you the, um, the time to draw your marking lines on. So I'm just going to sew on each of these. I am cutting my thread between each one because if I wasn't, it wouldn't lay really nice and flat. That thread wouldn't, would pull a little bit. And so it would make it so that it was a little harder for me to make sure that my pieces are centered perfectly on top together so that these pieces are centered, not centered, but you know, lined up perfectly with the sides. And the reason we want to do that is because when we trim these corners off and press them open, press this, the um, sides back, then if we're not perfectly centered on those sides, then, sorry, I'm stumbling all over myself today, then our block won't be perfectly square afterwards. So now I've sewn all four of my corners on, let's go over and trim off those corners and press. Okay, let's press. See, that was fast, right? And you only have to do that twice because we're only making two little spiders, unless you're very fond of spiders. And then I think it would be really fun to make up another one and make it up like a little bench pillow because I think that would be darling. 
<laughs> and then you could use a cute spider web um, print uh, quilting pattern with it. That would be darling. Or even add a little bit of embroidery, some buttons for eyes. I have many ideas. <laughs> so I'm trimming off these corners. What I'm doing is I'm lining up this dashed line that is a quarter of an inch away from the edge of my ruler right on top of the seam and trimming that corner off so that I have a quarter inch seam allowance left on the other side of the seam. So now you can see how we've got that cute little rounded square here, which gives our spider's body a little bit of a rounding. Let me get the wool mat over here. And we're gonna just press these towards the point. You can press your fabric towards the dark if you really would like to. In this case, it doesn't really matter. You're not having to nest any seams together, so you don't have to worry too much about that. It's your preference. So there is the body of our cute spider, and I think it looks really fun in the spider web print. And like I said, because this is a square, it doesn't really matter how your piece is right now. We'll just make sure that those spider webs are facing the right way when we go to sew the legs on. And speaking of the legs, they are very simple too. Even though they look complicated, complicated, they're not. So what we're going to do with the spider legs is I am going to draw the lines on here because it will be a little bit easier for you to follow along. So this is the print piece for one portion of the leg. There are two of these in each leg and then they're sewn together and then they'll go on each side of the body. So you'll have a print piece and you have two background pieces. These are, let me get to that. These are the, this is the B print piece and these are the L pieces. So we're gonna draw our diagonal lines on here and you're gonna do this four times for each of the spiders. So a total of eight of these. So I'm drawing a diagonal line. My background fabric isn't directional, so it doesn't matter which direction, as long as it's diagonal. And you're gonna place these on your piece of B fabric, and you're gonna sew them in place. You don't need to do them both at one time because it can be a little bit tricky. In the interest of time, I'm going to do them both at once, but I'm going to make sure that I don't overlap these pieces of fabric and um, sew them to each other. I recommend you sew one of them on, trim, press, and then sew the other one on. But we don't want to be here until, <laughs> until next Labor Day, so I'm going to sew them both on at once. So I'm going to sew on this marked line and on this marked line. And again, it doesn't matter which way you have it on the background fabric, but you want those lines going the same direction. Obviously, you don't want them um, overlapping the wrong way or anything like that. Janice says, pressing towards the dark allows the spider to look like it is on top of the background. Great tip, Janice, I love it. <laughs> okay, let's go sew. <clears throat> very toasty outside you guys I am not I'm not having it I'm just staying inside and sewing spiders and pumpkins so I've got one of my pieces on I'm going to go ahead and sew on that marked line and then I will kind of fold back that piece and put the other one on now you could definitely do yours this way too it's a tiny bit faster um, you just do have a little bit more risk of accidentally catching that bot that background piece on the other piece so and sewing it accidentally if you are worried about that at all just do them one at a time so now I'm going to make sure my piece is out of the way and I'm going to sew this other seam Sorry, I thought it had come unthreaded there, but it didn't. It just was teasing me. <laughs> okay, and you'll do this times eight. So we're four per spider. So now once we press this and fold them back, it'll look like this. And this is half a leg, <laughs> which sounds more unpleasant than it actually is.
Okay, let's trim these off again. Be careful if you sewn them both off at one on at one time that you're not trimming anything that you don't want to be trimming. So let's turn this this way. And we're doing the same thing. We're putting the dashed line that's a quarter of an inch from the edge right on that seam so that we are left with a seam allowance there. And so now what we have is this cute leg. So I'm going to press this. And that gives us one portion of the leg. Now you're going to pair that with another portion of the leg. And you're going to pair them so that they make an upside down V or part of an M or a mountain. <laughs> Whatever you would like to picture when you're sewing this together, picture that and we're going to sew these two together and where you're going to want to watch for seams is you're going to want these two points to line up. So when I take this over to the machine, I am going to go ahead and double check that it's lined up correctly and I'll pin that one little section in place. So we're gonna sew these two together right down this seam. Okay. <laughs> So what I'm doing is I have them lined up and I'm just going to check and see, okay, this is about a quarter of an inch seam allowance and so I'm going to grab one of my pins and go ahead and pin that in place so that it is um, held in place and then I'm going to sew. I have a slight difference here in my squares and I'm not going to worry too much about that. <laughs> I'm just going to kind of let the seam allowance fix that. I try and keep my blocks as accurate as possible, but if they are not perfectly accurate, I also don't fret. So you can see that it's pretty close as far as where those um, d uh, points line up. And so now we're going to go ahead and press, and then we're going to sew the top and bottom pieces that are a little bit of background piece on the top and bottom of this leg. Okay, so this is a little bit bulky because there are so many seams here, so we're gonna press these seams open. If you worry about pressing your seams open, just press them to one side. It'll be a little bit bulkier, but you can use a, um, I'm almost out of the camera, sorry. You can use a clapper if you would like to make it a little bit flatter and make it so that you don't have too many problems with that lying down. So here's our cute leg. And what we're going to do now is we're going to take the sashing pieces. This is the M and N pieces, and we're going to sew those in place. The M is the smaller piece that goes on top, and the N is the bottom one. We're going to sew these on, and sewing them together makes it so that our leg is the same size as the body. And it doesn't look like it now because those seam allowances are in there. But by the magic of seam allowances, <laughs> we will have that be the right size. So let's take those over and sew these two in place. I want to make sure I don't have any questions. <laughs> Sally says, flamingo fabric in a Halloween quilt, so Beverly. This is true, right? But they're skeleton flamingos, so it's okay. <laughs> All right, let's sew. So this is a pretty thin piece of background sashing. You want to make sure it's lined up nicely before you sew it in place. The thinner the piece is, the more likely it will look funky if it's not laid out correctly. So I'm going to sew this in place on the top of the leg. And again, you, you'll be making uh, four of these sets, two for each spider. So grab them all at once and chain piece them together. There's no reason you have to do one and then press them and then do another one and press them. That Those um, extra steps just add time to your sewing. So if you do you know, them in sections like this and then sew them all at once, 
kind of remove all those stops and starts. So here is what the leg unit looks like and we'll go press these out. So that leg unit looks complicated but really it's just two of these sections sewn together and that is all there is to make up the leg. And isn't that fun you guys? It's really really cute. I really think it would be a fun pillow. Maybe I'll make up a little pillow. <laughs> okay, so once you have that, you will repeat that for another leg for your spider. Look, magic. And then all you have to do to assemble your spider is put them all together. And we're not, I'm not going to sew those together. But the gist of it is, that's all there is to it. So you'll want to make sure for the spider that the spider web print, if you're using Haunted Adventure, is going the right direction and you can see that that um, the spider webs are kind of at the top and then they go down to the little spider and when you are sewing these together you're going to sew them so that I'll show you on this one the legs line up like the bottom of the leg lines up with the like bottom corner of the body so that those legs, and that's the only part you have to worry about lining up, is you want the bottoms of those legs to kind of meet right where the little diagonal point of the bottom of the body meets. So if you want to be cautious and pin when you're sewing them in place, then that is a good, you know, you'll just, just flip your little piece over here before you sew and kind of line up and make sure, okay, that does look like it's going to be good and, and then you'll sew them in place and they'll look really cute. And so then you'll have two little spiders. And those spiders are going to be sewn on top of each other with the um, S sashing piece in between them. And all those uh, cutting information is in the pattern. So, and the pattern is linked in my shop. So you can pick up the paper or PDF version of the pattern. So are you guys ready to sew pumpkins? Yay, pumpkins. <laughs> so I have a couple cutting tips for you guys before I cut out the pumpkin um, and I could have worded this better in the pattern just a little bit so in the pattern where it talks about the prints for cutting the pumpkins the C through F pieces are the short wide pumpkins so those are going to be the yellow pumpkins the tall pumpkin let me get over here so you can see the tall pumpkin is the orange pumpkin. So C through F are the yellow pumpkins. And for the E pieces, you're going to need to cut those out so that your print goes up and down, it's vertical. For the F pieces, you're going to cut those out so that the piece runs horizontal. And if you take the time to cut those out that way, then when you go to sew it together, you'll be able to make sure that your fabrics are all directional. I like to just do a little notation by the print, by the instructions, and I just draw little arrows. So I can remember, okay, these are cut out horizontally, these are cut out vertically. If you are not using directional fabrics, it doesn't matter. <laughs> then the G are the stems. You're gonna use the same stem for every pumpkin, if you would like. And then the I through J pieces that you're going to cut out are for the orange pumpkin. And if you're using directional fabrics, which I'm not, it's the skeleton in mine, but you might be, um, you're going to cut the I piece out vertically and the J piece out horizontally. So just write down with your pencil some little notes in the pattern and that will make it really easy for you to put together. So we have actually two prints for the center pinwheel. Now I'm gonna show you how to do this, but before I show you how to do it with directional fabrics, if you do not want to do a pinwheel, but you want something in the center, the, in, the block measurements for each section are in the pattern. So you'll be able to look through to step four and see that the pinwheel, when you're finished, is supposed to be five inch by five inch, unfinished. So if you would like to fussy cut something for the center of your pumpkin, instead of doing this pinwheel, 
then cut it at five inches by five inches and put it in there and assemble everything else the same way that you would and it'll be a cute fussy cut center of your pumpkin. If you would like to have your pumpkin be completely salt, like one whole piece rather than piece together, then that measurement is step five and it's at the end of step five and it's going to be seven and a half by 11 for the wide pumpkins and it will be seven and a half by 11 and a half for the tall pumpkin. No, I lied. Seven and a half by 10. I went ahead to look at the stem. So just some things to be thinking about if you do not want to piece your pumpkins together, okay? I want to give you guys choices. So we are using a um, non-directional print and a directional print. So the way that we do these is that you are going to draw diagonal lines on the directional print, or it doesn't matter really which one you draw the lines on, but you want the lines to be opposite of each other. So we're gonna draw this diagonal line going from top left to bottom right, and we're gonna place it like this on our black flamingo fabric. Then this line, we're going to draw top right to bottom left, like that. I draw and draw and draw, I need to get a black pen. I will do that. <laughs> And we're gonna place that like this on the piece. So here's our lines, and you can see how they go opposite each other. We're making half square triangles, and so we're gonna sew a quarter of an inch seam on either side of the marked lines. So let's go sew. So I would love to know, does anybody want to leave out the pinwheels like do you guys want to do any fussy cutting or make your pumpkins whole or are you going to do only pumpkins and leave out the spiders i've given several choices in this week's video for options oh let's go ahead and chain piece these so i'm sewing two at once i didn't cut my thread i'll go back through and cut my thread once i'm done i'm sewing a quarter of an inch seam on either side of those marked lines so I'm just gonna pull my thread out a little bit and go on this side, except I'm too far from the line there. And so I'm just sewing a straight seam on either side of that line. So let me know if you're gonna make the pattern as written or if you're planning on getting creative with your pumpkins and spiders and um, doing anything like that. I think you could even add, if you liked the buttons on the spider idea, you could even add those after you've quilted the quilt. So you could make your quilt and then just add in a couple little buttons for some cuteness. You could do that with the cats too, so buttons for eyes. So here we have those seams on either side of the marked line. Now we're going to go ahead and cut them apart, trim, press and trim. Okay, here's our pieces. And we're gonna go ahead and do these. Hey, Marsha, <laughs> I'm glad you're here. Teresa's excited for the pumpkins. Pamela's doing the pinwheels. Dawn's doing the pinwheels, I love it. Uh, let's see, Pamela's doing only pumpkins. One is solid, she loves the pinwheels though, so the rest will have them. Love that, Pamela. Please, please, please share a photo of your quilt or your pumpkins, we want to see. <laughs> okay, so I've placed my ruler right on that marked line this time because we're making half square triangles and I've cut them apart, mostly, now all the way, and we're going to press. And these I am all pressing towards the darker fabric. So we're going to press these apart, um, and then we will trim. What about the eyes for buttons? Do you guys like that idea? Any cute, cute little black buttons on the cats or you could use little white buttons on the spider webs. I think that would be cute. Depends on how scary you wanna make it, then you could do like different co colored eyes, like little red eyes. <laughs> that sounds horrible. <laughs> I would not do that, 
<laughs> but it's your quilt, so you can do that if you want a really scary, spooky lane. <laughs> Teresa says she thinks it will do it um, like the pinwheels, but having to use it for stash because she doesn't have Haunted Adventure. That's perfectly great, Teresa. I would love to see yours. Okay, so I'm going to trim two of these at once. I'm laying them out so that the black fabrics are opposite each other, and I'm going to line them up perfectly and make sure that those seams are nested together. You can do them one at a time if you would like. There's no really um, hard and fast rule about that, of course. And I'm going to trim these down. These get trimmed to two and three quarters by two and three quarters. So I just wanna make sure that on my two and three quarter line on my ruler, there's a little bit of fabric around all four sides. That makes sure that once we trim them, we have really nice straight lines and our half square triangles are really beautifully straight. And when we go to sew them in our pinwheel, they will look really nice and tidy. Okay, so there are two, and we're going to do two more. If you are not comfortable with this, um, you can practice it first, or you can just trim them one at a time. That is okay. And if you are trimming two cuts at once, make sure your fingers are back from the top of the ruler. Never put your hand on a ruler like this. Always keep your hand with the fingers inside the ruler on all sides. It's no point in speeding up the whole process if you have to go to the doctor and have your fingers stitched back together. <laughs> that really slows down your quilting. <laughs> Okay, now we have cute half square triangles that are made up of one non-directional fabric and one directional fabric. These little pennants are made, and again, they're very small. So if you don't care about directional fabrics, this is definitely one to let it go on if you would like, because even at this point, it's a little hard to tell how the direction is. But when you are sewing together like your spider web pumpkin, it's a little bit more noticeable if your directions are going off, you know, kind of opposite each other. So these tips work for any directional fabric. But we want our pennants to kind of have the pointy edges down. So we are going to lay out our cute pinwheel so that all of our directional fabrics are going the same way. And we are, we made sure, we don't do that, <laughs> we made sure that when we did those lines opposite each other, that allowed us to have four half square triangles that all the directional fabrics go the same way. So now we've laid that out, we've made sure it's correct, and now we're going to sew those together. <laughs> Christine says she's keeping the pinwheels but replacing the spiders with either more pumpkins or a black cat. Ooh, I love that. <laughs> Teresa says that her daughter's trying to take her, so she's making double the blocks. <laughs> That's very sweet, Teresa. <laughs> okay, let's go take these to the sewing machine and we're gonna sew them together. Okay, I'm making sure that I have my pinwheel laid out correctly and everything's the right direction. And now I'm going to take this top section here and I'm going to nest the seams together and I'm going to sew the first row together. And then I am going to, once I get to the bottom of this one, I'm not gonna cut my thread, just going to leave it and I'm going to sew the next two together. This is how we do a lot of blocks here at Flamingo Toes. We piece them together with, I think, what is now called web piecing. And that doesn't have anything to do with Halloween. <laughs> Just makes it a lot easier for you to sew your block together and keep track of your directions of your blocks. So now we've got this held in place by that little thread. And so we're gonna go over and we're not gonna cut it. We're gonna take it over and we're going to press so that when we sew these two rows together along this side, it will make sure that we don't flip our pinwheels 
or our block of any kind and um, that everything's still laid out the correct way. So let's go press. So we're going to press this so that the seams are opposite each other. So we'll press this one this way and this one this way and that way and also maybe burn our thumbs in the process. <laughs> Try not to do that part, okay? That is highly um, not recommended. <laughs> okay, I, I'm not hurt. It just was small, a small burn, you know. <laughs> okay, so now we have our cute pinwheel and our seams are pressed opposite each other so that when we fold our top row onto our bottom row and sew across here, those seams will nest together really nicely. And that also keeps the bulk that's in the center of the pinwheel down a little bit if your seams are nesting. So what we're gonna do is go over to the machine and we're gonna sew this together right along that center seam. Okay, so we wanna make sure that's nice and straight. Our seam is nested nicely and we're gonna sew that together. Along there. Sometimes you gotta help it a little bit over that bulk. That's fine, just don't sew through your finger. This is like, today is like the warning label for all the things that can go wrong while you're sewing. <laughs> so now when we open it up, we have this really cute little pinwheel block and because I want to press this seam open, I'm going to go ahead and clip that little web thread so that I can press that seam open. Otherwise, it wouldn't be able to, it would be holding it close. So I'm gonna press that open and that's gonna kind of reduce some of the bulk in the center of the pinwheel too. Again, if you feel, if you feel strongly like you hate um, seams pressed open, then you know these are just a guideline. You can do your quilt however you would like. There are no quilt police. Nobody's going to get mad at you. <laughs> okay, I keep messing up my seams. There, now we're gonna have our cute pinwheel. This is going to be a short, short wide pinwheel. The tall pinwheel is assembled exactly the same way. You're just going to use different pieces. So where we are going to now sew on these two wide pieces, and we're gonna make sure they're going the right direction. These are the E pieces. On the tall pumpkin, you're actually, the pinwheels are made exactly the same, but the side pieces are really narrow and the top and bottom pieces are the wider, taller pieces. So you're just going to want to use your little alphabet markers, your alphabeties or something like that to keep track of which pumpkin is which so that when you're going to sew it together, you don't have any problems with that. So we're gonna sew these two pieces on each side of our pinwheel block. So let's go do that. Everybody hanging in there? You all right? <laughs> Oh, Ramona, she said I made the pinwheel look easy. That's very sweet, Ramona. Thank you. Dolores is here, hey Dolores. Okay, so let's sew these two side seams on our pumpkin. And you notice that I made sure that the directional fabrics were going the correct way to what I had done in the pinwheel. So, Sometimes directional fabric, you have to be, you know, very, very careful. And sometimes it's just a matter of, you know, paying attention and laying your block out before sewing it together to make sure that the pieces are going the right way. And also, you know, kind of paying attention to that when you're cutting out the pieces. So things to be thinkful. Just a, just a little bit more of a mindful step as you're assembling. But it adds such a fun look to a print and it's fun to keep track of. So now we have on our short wide pumpkin, we have the sides of our pumpkin and we're going to go press and then we'll sew the top and bottom sides on.
Okay, see these are, there's some steps here, but they're not crazy complicated, right? I mean, definitely less steps than we had for the cat or the bats, well, maybe about the same as the bats. So here are the cute sides of our pumpkin. Now we're going to take those long horizontal pieces and we're going to sew them to the top and bottom, and we're going to make a long rectangle. And as I told you in the a little bit ago, all the block sizes of each section, are the measurements are at each step. So you can kind of look at your pinwheel, and then you can look at your pumpkin and go, okay, I'm right on track here. Or if you're wanting to sub it out without doing the extra piecing, you can refer to those measurements. So now we're gonna sew these two seams in place. Okay, I'm just lining these up. You can use pins if you want here. These are pretty straight seams and you don't have to worry about, you know, any um, matching up any seams with these guys, which is great. Um, just wanna make sure that it stays lined up straight as I sew the whole seam together. And I know some of you guys are faster sewers than I am. I do sew a little bit slower than I normally do when I'm on camera, but I'm also not a crazy, crazy fast sewer. I've figured that if I um, sew super fast and try and be as fast as other people, I tend to make mistakes or my blocks aren't pieced as accurately as I'd like them to be. So <laughs> fortunately, it's not a race. So you can just do it at whatever speed you would like. I'm just gonna make sure that's lined up correctly there. And these, um, this forms the body of the pumpkin. Okay, so now we'll open these out and press, and this is our short wide pumpkin. That would be a cute t-shirt, right? Like for fall, I'm a short wide pumpkin. <laughs> I could wear that. I am not very tall. <laughs> All right, so I'm pressing those seams towards the, um, the edges here. I'm going to grab just a little bit of my spray starch and kind of go through and make sure that those are nice and straight it looks funny because of the pinwheel print but it is straight i promise you it just doesn't look like it okay so this is the body of the pumpkin really really simple and easy and what you're going to do <laughs> okay you guys are agree you're slow and steady like me um Teresa says she saw a lady use a hammer to pound the bulky intersection as flat as a pancake. I have seen that too, Teresa. I don't keep a hammer in here, but yeah, I guess if you want to be really, really, really flat, then do it. <laughs> so we're going to sew the corners on our pumpkin just like we did with the, uh, the body of the spider web. So you're going to have your lines kind of create that rounded effect. And I'm not gonna do that today because it's the exact same point just as like we did with this, the um, spider body. And then for each of the pumpkins, you're going to sew a stem unit, which is going to be the cute stem with a sashing piece on either side. The sashing pieces on either side of the t short wide pumpkins are gonna be longer the one that's on the top of the tall narrow pumpkin, uh, it's shorter sashing. So again, watch where you've marked your pieces so that you know what goes on where. And then the short wide pumpkin also has a background sashing piece that will get sewn on top of that. And the reason we do that is so that the short and tall pumpkins are the same height. So you can see how those blocks line up and how they're the same height 
Well, when there's not pieces of fabric lying around. They're the same height. <laughs> So that's how um, it goes together. And it's really, really simple. So here's how the those little corners end up and they give us the rounded pumpkin shape. And so again, you will do two short wide pumpkins and one tall narrow pumpkin if you are doing the pattern exactly as written. If you are not, then you can just, you know, go crazy. <laughs> There's also sashing that will be sewn between, if you're sewing your rows together now, you will um, add sashing between the spiders and pumpkins and then between the pumpkins themselves. So you'll be able to see how it looks in the row. There's sashing between the two spiders and then sashing like all on either, on the sides of between the pumpkins and then a little tiny piece between the spider and the edge. So those will all go together. And there are also row measurements for each row to kind of help you keep tabs on how wide your rows are. So keep track of that. If your rows are ending up all the same size but not the same size I have, that's okay. We're gonna talk about that when we do assembly week. It's not like super, super important yet that you worry about your widths of your rows. So don't stress yet. So that's all there is today for the spider webs, the spiders and the pumpkins. I hope that you guys um, understood everything and that they don't look too tricky for you. They go together pretty quickly once you just kind of dive in. Next week is our last row of the quilt and that is the spooky lane <laughs> spider, uh, spider. It's Labor Day y'all. <laughs> that is the haunted house row or the cute house row. Yeah, haunted house row. So. Um, we were making up five little houses. There will be two, three tall houses and two short houses. And you're going to um, make them all up and they're really fun. And there's some great options for fussy cutting your windows and doors there um, or your roof or whatever you would like. You can add embroidery, cute elements, things like that. We'll talk about that all next week. I will let you guys know that I will have a recorded video again next week. I'm sorry about that. I much prefer being here with you live, but I am flying out next Monday for Garden of Quilts in Utah. And so I will be actually in the air. No, I will already be in Utah by the time our video goes live. So I will have a recorded video for you guys next week. It'll go live just at our normal time. like. It did two weeks ago, and then I will be keeping tabs on the comments if you guys have any questions, and you can always email me. I will be out of town next week, so um, I will be a little bit slower getting back to people if you have questions or comments. Still email me, and it'll just give me a few extra days to get back to you. And um, if you are coming to Garden of Quilts, I can't wait to see you and meet you in person and maybe sew with you. <laughs> Um, if you guys uh, haven't stopped by the shop, don't forget that the Labor Day sale ends tomorrow night, so get your shopping in there. Um, I am not able to get any more of the pre-cuts of any of the fabric collections. I, I can't get any more pre-cuts of Sweet Acres. Definitely not Daisy Fields or Hush Hush 2. Definitely not Christmas Adventure. So if there is something you're wanting, this will be the time to get it because once I run out, I'm out. And we have to make room for all the new afternoon tea that's coming in a month. Can you guys believe it? It's very exciting. <laughs> I hope you have a fabulous Labor Day. Enjoy your day, get some rest, have some fun, maybe eat a hamburger. That's what I'm gonna go do. And hopefully you'll have a fabulous week. I will be here, not live, next Monday, and I will see you guys again live in two weeks when we start assembling our quilts. Very exciting. I hope you all have a lovely week. Stay cool. Think those fallish thoughts. <laughs> and I will see you guys soon. Have a great week.